let's play read between the lines. We'll start with Tom Brady, Sully, and the Las Vegas Raiders, Roger Goodell. So I wouldn't say it's the ownership process hadn't been finalized. He said, I wouldn't say it's a delay. It's a very thorough process regarding all ownership transfers. We're just going through that process. We've been in tough and tough with their side. And I feel it's making progress again, like literally nothing. Sully uh, read between the lines on Roger Goodell talking Tom Brady and the Raiders. I, I think it's just one of these situations where it's at a standstill and it's a basic non-answer. And, and when I say standstill, just kind of a longer process because breach, I, I'm pretty sure you wrote about this too. Like, wasn't it that he was basically getting it at a great deal and it was under market value of what did he be getting into? So that's probably why NFL owners are a little bit, apprehensive to say the least about him possibly jumping on as a minority owner of the Raiders. Yeah. And he was getting a super discount. He was getting a Walmart right. level discount that only the Broncos should be able to give because they're owned by the Walmart guy. <laughs> and I think that you had the other owners just kind of raising their eyebrow and saying, Hey, you're kind of torpedoing the value of every team. If you start selling at this discount rate and we can't have that happen. But I think the interesting thing, and so Brady kind of initially agreed to this in May 2023, and we are still here talking about it. Uh, right before Valentine's Day, Super Bowl Sunday, NFL media reported that Tom Brady is now back on track to become a Raiders minority owner. And so the thought was that this would get approved at this round uh, at the annual league meeting. It did not. So it is interesting that there's another delay. Maybe they just want to see, hey, look, you guys, the price was 10% of what we wanted. You need to keep knocking that up and we're not going to prove this until it gets to a number that everyone is on board with. And that's what it feels like. And I do think the other interesting thing here is the Fox thing. Look, they, they can say publicly, it doesn't matter. But if Tom Brady is calling your game, he goes into your locker room. He's talking to your guys about personnel. He's talking to your guys about strategy. He's talking to the head coach, but that would worry me a little bit if I'm yeah. an owner proving him as an owner. So I don't think this is as cut and dry as it maybe sounded a month ago. Right. That's I was just point. I was just going to yeah. say, no, real quick, Brinson, is that, yes, I think it has more to do with television than it does. Like, I know that some people will automatically be like, well, he could come back. He could quarterback for the team. I, I, I think it has much more to do with broadcasting and financial value of a franchise than it does any possibility of him coming back to play. I don't think that's really in the cards. I, I mean, I would be annoyed as hell if I was a, if I was an NFL owner and it's like, Hey, cool, Tom. Like you were great for the league for forever. You cost us multiple Super Bowls, except for your boy Bobby Kraft over there. Um, it's like, like we could we we didn't win a lot because of you. And you're telling me you're going to come in here and take like a massive discount, and you're going to broadcast these games where it's I, yeah, like I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't think that I hadn't even really thought about the broadcast angle, but I think it's a fantastic point to me that like, that should you should not be able to broadcast NFL games for a network and be a minority NFL owner. I mean, if you're if if you're the Chiefs or the Chargers or the Broncos and Tom Brady is calling your game, I mean, aren't you – I mean, do you think Sean Payton, Andy Reid, and Jim Harbaugh are paranoid about Tom Brady stealing secrets from them? Yeah, they are. <laughs> like, well, I mean, why wouldn't they be? So, yeah, that's a that's a good call. I mean, I think you got to – and, I mean, Tom Brady's definitely going to take this broadcasting job. It also seems like – I'm starting to come around to the idea that Tom Brady would be pretty good at it just because he's good at everything and he's had so much time to practice. And I think he kicked the can down the road basically for a year to do like covert broadcasting, like training camp. Uh, no. And, and it sucks because Greg Olson was awesome. I thought, but you know, uh, it, Brady typically does not bad at what he does. Yeah. I, I liked Greg Olson a lot. I, I no, know, I mean, it, I think it'll be worse than Greg Olson. Don't get me it, wrong. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see him take on the role, but I think he's going to stink. I, I, I'm trying I, I've, I've always I, thought he was going to stink the entire time, yeah. but now that like he took an entire year to practice. Yeah, but but was he real? Is he him? Is it him and Burkhart just in the booth like every day, just grinding? Like I don't think that that's no, happening. probably not. Like I, I think it's going to be very interesting to see him be critical of any one of these players. You know, I, I just think of Patrick Mahomes. Like if he's doing a Patrick Mahomes game. I will be very shocked to see him be extremely critical of some of these throws or anything, any type of those decisions, maybe not taking a timeout. Just anything hearing Brady be critical is something I've never really heard. I've never really well, heard him. Go he, he started to do it with the podcast a little bit where he's like, he's like, this the game is just crap now. It's like, you played but two that, years but ago, that's, bro. But that's macro. Like, that's yeah. a very, like, back in my day, kids, we would do this. I'm talking about... That's a bad throw by Patrick Mahomes. He shouldn't have done this. It just that type of thing. I don't. I haven't seen him do it. 
<laughs> yes, <know>. exactly. <laughs> I mean, I, the one thing about that, though, is that I feel like Tom Brady is the one guy who can be critical and not worry about the blowback. He's got seven Super Bowls on his resume. Yeah. Whereas if you're Greg Olson, and, and no offense to Greg Olson, but if you're critical, players might say, well, okay, but what did you do? Where, where's your Super Bowl ring, man? Like, why are we taking criticisms from you? So I feel like there's Brady almost has this impunity because he's Tom Brady. So I do feel like if someone immunity, can do it, not impunity. It, it's Brady. <laughs> it's still Brady. <laughs> All right, next up, reading between the lines. Talk about the Eagles. They are playing a game in Brazil to kick off the season. I mean, the NFL is just like it's like the greediest. I look, whatever. It's good for us because it keeps us employed and all that. But it's um, just such a such a greedy, greedy organization. They are playing in Brazil. It's only on Peacock. Of course it is. My God, stop shoving Peacock down our. You know what? I'm not going to finish that sentence. Um, Goodell addressed the international game saying, it's a market that we think will be an explosive market for us. We think this type of event will continue that growth factor and actually accelerate it. I skipped an entire read between the lines. I'm sorry, Harry. That's my bad. But but great, great. We can do it last, for instance. We'll just rejuggle the yeah, order. Yeah, we'll flip it. Yeah. Uh, read between the lines, Breach. Uh, well, I think that what Roger Goodell is trying to say is that he promised a few years ago that the NFL would eventually make $25 billion. Uh, he milked the cow for all it's worth on this side of the world. Now it's time. You got to stretch out. You got to go into other countries and you got to get new fans and you got to figure out new ways to bring in more money. And uh, Brazil is a pretty gigantic untapped market. So I, I think that it's going to be huge there. I think that the game is going to sell out. Tickets are going to be hot. And the NFL is going to have millions of new fans for bringing this game down there uh, in week one with the Eagles playing on Peacock. Yeah, I'm all for growing football, growing the NFL, because as you mentioned, Brinson, that only helps us, right? Like that's yeah. that's money in our pockets. But I will say this, you know, when we start to go into these different markets and we're putting these marquee games on, I mean, this is again, this is an, an initial game right out of the gate in the NFL season. You're all you're pigeonholing yourself in a couple of different ways when you sometimes go abroad, and then when you go a step further and put it on a streaming service, you're just really limiting the amount of people that can watch this. This is fine because the time change isn't so too bad for a lot of things. But like if you do what MLB did to start this season, and you're playing in Seoul, and these games are starting yeah. at 6 a.m. and it's the Dodgers and it's the Padres, and you're relatively excited to see Shohei Otani in a Dodgers uniform, you have to wake up at like five in the morning east coast time that's you got to be very careful if you're starting to do these international games in terms of time zones but overall this is going to help the game immensely yeah and look i mean uh, you know whatever like christmas brazil yeah it's, 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 you know what my biggest takeaway here is mark cuban needs an old takes like an old takes exposed account just for mark cuban who like 15 years ago said like cows get or what is it? Pigs get fed and hogs get slaughtered. He's like, yeah, the NFL is like, like, like yeah. going to be dead in a couple of years. It's like, hey, maybe, maybe, maybe you should have said that, Mark, because now Christmas, Christmas is coming, pal. Like, like, like Roger Goodell's like, oh, Mark, you think that's funny? Well, Christmas is mine now. Yeah, he's um, a who and whoville. And, and real quick NFL's on this game, uh, Mark Murphy, Packers president, said that the Eagles either be playing the Packers or the Browns. It'll be one of those two teams playing in brazil so cleveland fans you might be taking the dog pound to south america we might see the cheese heads in south america uh we don't know which one it is but i think he or goodell said that the decision is supposed to be made at some point in the next week so we should know soon who the eagles opponent will be and also it's interesting this game is on a friday night because that's generally kind of your lowest tv rated night and so maybe that's why they're putting it on streaming because it's not so much about the numbers. Mm. It's about playing a game in Brazil and just kind of get that out of the way and and then, you know, figure things out after that. Yeah, it was interesting. I was looking at, I know nobody cares about NC State, but I was looking at the ratings for, um, so like Carolina and Michigan State. Obviously, Carolina and Michigan State, a bigger game than NC State and Oakland. But Carolina kind of blew out Michigan State. It wasn't a great game. Ratings were for Carolina and Michigan State were much higher than NC State, Oakland. And part of that is just because it's Saturday night and people like you might be watching in a bar somewhere or, you know, you're, you're like checking on your phone and you're not actually watching the game. And I think that that's a great point, Breach, is the NFL on a Friday night knows there's a chance that the ratings aren't up to snuff for, you know, like, like the Amazon, like Amazon Prime game or the Prime Day or, or Black Friday game during the day on a Friday on like a, 
you know, the day after a holiday, like it was going to do monster ratings. Like everybody, you know, everybody's at home. The, the parents know how to get to Amazon Prime because the kids are there. Like that, that was always going to do big ratings. Friday night, early in the season, maybe not so much. So it's a, it's a very interesting point. Speaking of the Eagles, Cadell also mentioned the Falcons and Eagles tampering discussions. The Falcons, of course, um, being accused of tampering with Kirk Cousins, or, or later they're investigating whether they tampered with Kirk Cousins and the Eagles, if they tampered with Saquon Barkley. Um, Goodell said, quote, I usually don't give an update until it's concluded. I'm sure they're making progress. They were hard at work at it immediately, end quote. <laughs> I usually don't give an update until it's done. It's like, well, I mean, like, well, I mean, you, you tell me, Roger, you haven't gotten anything from, from the investigators at all. Like, Hey, we started, here's where we're at. Like, I mean, you got no update whatsoever before the owners meetings. You're telling me you have no information about this investigation. When you spoke to the 32 NFL owners who you work for. Sure. Roger, that makes total sense. Why would you have no update whatsoever from the league investigators? Total sense breach. Uh, yeah. I mean, like you said, he's the master of the word salad and he's perfected it. And that's why he has been a pretty good commissioner. I will say though, you know, we talked a little bit about this when it happens, but I wouldn't be surprised if the NFL, I don't, maybe not drops the hammer, but, but like drops the screwdriver on the Falcons because you just have Kirk Cousins literally admitting to it. I don't see how they cannot not get punished. And so I feel like if you make an example of that, maybe dock them a third round pick or whatever, uh, then teams will cut down on the chatter that comes before the tampering period. Cause NFL is saying, look, we already gave you a tampering period. We're not going to open up pre-tampering tampering on Saturday and Sunday, the weekend before free agency start. So we need you guys to at least follow the rules. And the way you do that is by punishing teams that break them. I think it'll be a little tougher with the Eagles just because that's kind of a he said, he said with Saquon and uh, Howie Rosemann and Penn State. And coach his college James coach. James <laughs> Franklin, right. So uh, that one's a little more different, but you have Kirk Cousins admitting to it. So I don't know how you get out of not punishing the Falcons. Breach, I'll just say this, though. You say that they might not do a pre-tampering period thing, but I don't know. If you can make that a marquee event, again, we were just ah, going over yeah, it. That's right. you, you never know. <laughs> but but I do think – you're right, Brinson. Like, if the Maras go up to uh, Roger Goodell and be like, hey, so what was the deal with that with our star running back, Saquon Barkley, immediately going to our division rival? I don't know. I haven't looked into it yet. Like, uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure, you know, you know I don't I'm provide sure updates until answer, they're done. Right? It's like – Sure, you you know, like you guys pay me my forty million dollar a year bonus, but I mean, like, I'm not gonna give you an update about what the investigators say. Like, you know, somebody updated you before you went to this meeting. Like, and you it, got an update on these things. Like, it's like, he's like, I'm sure they've probably started. I don't. Who knows? It's like, you know exactly where they're at in the investigation, Roger. Just tell us. Have they started? Have they done? Have they talked to you? I mean, it's ridiculous. Also, right. they're they're hard at work immediately, like you said, breach. Both players basically had already admitted to it publicly during press conferences. Yeah. And it's like Florio's reporting that, you know, Cousin's wife is down in Atlanta checking out schools like <laughs> two weeks before tampering period even begins. Like, oh, yeah, of course he's talked to people. Well, I will say with Saquon, right? though, he actually went on uh, the New Heights podcast with Travis and Jason Kelsey uh, on Ooh. Wednesday, March 27th. And he said he was actually texting with CJ Stroud and – his first instinct was to sign with the Texans. He's allowed to, you know, the players can recruit each other. He can't, no, true, 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 he can't true. talk with the coaching staff or the general manager, or anybody in Houston. Uh, and he's like, yeah, that, that's kind of, I thought where I was going to end up. And then he said the Eagles called on Monday. So he, you know, he stuck to that part of the story and was saying, Smart. so he's, he's trying to make sure the Eagles don't get in trouble. Saquon's, Saquon's done a good job sort of walking this back. I feel like the Falcons are like, I feel like the Falcons are like, so like co like cocky after signing um, Kirk Cousins are like, whatever, like dude, we went and got Cousins. Like we We're got the Super Bowl. We don't care. Yeah. I, I like the vibe. It's a good vibe. Good. Yeah. Like, by all means, be cocky, be confident, you know, go win some football games.